Hey guys, Zoe here, and I just want to tell you guys about the changes that I'll be making to my YouTube web series called Reviewing Stuff. Now first off, I just want to say that the overall quality of the videos will be better. Gone are the days of the crappy sound mixing, abysmal visual quality, and overall awkward performance. No, this time it'll be better than it ever was before, thanks to some friends of mine behind the scenes. Next off, I'm changing the overall format of the show. This time around, the reviews are going to be a little bit more honed in and focused instead of, you know, all over the place. To do this, I'm adding a set of criteria for each thing that I'm going to be reviewing and also putting in a new rating system. So let's not delay any further by talking about the criteria. The criteria is going to be different based on the thing that I'm going to be reviewing. So the question is, what am I going to be reviewing this time around? Well, that's pretty simple. This time around, it'll be video games, movies, and albums. And let's not delay any further by talking about the video game criteria. For my video game reviews, I'll be talking about story, gameplay, and graphics. In story, I'll be talking about the character interactions as well as the overarching plot of the game. In gameplay, I'll be talking about how it feels to control the character and also doing various actions in the game, and in graphics, I'll not only be talking about the overall graphical quality of the game, but also the art style that's present throughout it as well. Then now it's time to go ahead and move on to the movie criteria. The criteria for my movie reviews will be plot, characters, and acting. In plot, I'll be talking about how the story moves as well as how well structured it is. In characters, I'll be talking about the different character interactions, if the characters are relatable or likable and all that sort of stuff. And in acting, I'll be looking at the actors' performances and seeing how well they portray the characters. Now it's time to move on to, last, but certainly not least, the album reviews. The criteria for my album reviews will be musicianship, quality, and tone. Musicianship will be talking about how the band sounds together, their chemistry, all that sort of thing. Quality will be talking about the production and recording quality of the album. And tone will be the overall sound of the album, especially when it comes to concept albums. Now that the criteria is over and done with, it's time to talk about the rating system. See, the old scale of 1 to 10 just doesn't do what I want it to do. It's not a grading scale like I thought, and when my friend told me that 5 out of 10 is actually average, I knew that it just wasn't for me. So what is for me? Naturally, a grading scale. You see, I'll be grading each of the things that I'll be reviewing on a scale of F being the absolute worst of the worst, and A being the absolute best, or at least in my opinion. But there is one rating for the things that are just a better than best, that are that just go above and beyond the Call of Duty and doing something amazing, and that's the S rating. Now, typically I don't think there will be that many things that will get the S rating or the F rating, but it is always good to have those extremes covered just in case I encounter something like that. So there you have it, the criteria and rating system for reviewing stuff. Now let's go ahead and see this in action by doing a review naturally. Thank you guys so much and enjoy the review. Hello and welcome back to Reviewing Stuff, where I talk about video games, movies, and albums. So this time around we're going to talk about an indie game that might just bring a tear to your eye, even if you happen to be the manliest of men. This is To The Moon. This game has been praised by many, and while it's not one of the most popular indie games out there, it certainly has had an impact on those who have experienced it and played it for themselves. So let's not hold back the tears any longer by talking about the story. The story of To The Moon takes place in a possibly distant future where two technicians, Dr. Eva Rosaline and Dr. Neil Watts, use a device to play back and change people's memories and their clients just so happen to be elderly people that are on their deathbeds. They do this in order to allow their clients the chance to be able to fulfill their dreams before they die. Their client this time around is an elderly guy by the name of Johnny Wiles, and all he wants to do is go to the moon. Hmm. He wants to go to the moon. The game is called To the Moon. It's, it's, it's probably a coincidence. It's no big deal. 
At any rate, to do this, Dr. Rosaline and Dr. Watts have to travel through Johnny's memories to be able to implant the dream of becoming an astronaut at a young age so that way he can go to the moon. The way that this story is told is very interesting. It's basically telling the story of Johnny through the eyes of the two technicians and starts with him as an old man and ends with him as a kid. Now let's talk about the two technicians. Dr. Eva Rosaline is a female technician that takes her job a little bit more seriously and handles things very delicately. Her commentary on things is actually pretty damn insightful and she tends to sympathize with the people in a given situation. Near the end of the game though, she gets fed up with the way that Johnny's memories are going and she decides to take matters into her own hands. She also shows a determination to get her job done no matter what. Then there's her counterpart, Dr. Neil Watts, who is a male character that is more of a goofball and doesn't really take anything seriously, except for Animorphs, apparently. His commentary is usually just him making jokes about the situation and not taking it seriously at all. Near the end of the game, however, when Dr. Rosaline gets fed up with everything that's going on, he does show that he genuinely cares not only about his job, but also about the client. And also that he's been invested in this story the entire time. He even cries at the end of the game at Johnny's inevitable funeral. Now let's talk a little bit about Johnny's story without giving away too many spoilers as well. Johnny was married to a woman named River for presumably a long time and she died two years before the events of this game. Their history together is very extensive, and they seem to love each other very much. River is a kind-hearted woman who reads a lot of books and likes lighthouses. She even makes a comment about how she thinks all the stars in the sky are actually lighthouses, trying to direct people to them. Johnny is someone who seems selfish, but is also a pretty average guy and a very caring person as well. But without going into too much detail, without spoiling the story, Everything is not as it seems. He's been through quite a lot of things in his life, and it definitely shows. And it's definitely heartbreaking to find out about. It's very well written, and it definitely felt like real people going through real emotions and experiencing real situations. It's pretty intense stuff, man, I tell you. Now it's time to look at the gameplay. The gameplay is pretty simple. It's an RPG Maker game where you can either use the mouse to move around or the arrow keys. I used the mouse controls for most of the game and they were really responsive and really well done. The main focus of the game is to establish memory links by either exploring a different area or picking up items so that you can activate a memento to move on to the next memory. As the game goes on, however, the gameplay starts changing things up a bit, either changing the main focus of the game or adding different puzzles and things you have to do in order to move on. This keeps the game interesting and is definitely fun to play from beginning to end. Not only that, but the pacing is really well done. I didn't feel like I was going through the game too quickly, but I didn't feel like it was dragging on either. And this gives you the chance to be able to engage the story and be able to understand everything that is going on as well. Now let's go ahead and talk about the graphics. This game has 2D graphics that look really damn good. Picture Super Nintendo graphics, and that's exactly the kind of stuff that you're looking at with this game. The character animations are pretty smooth, the artwork that was made for the game looks really good, and the backgrounds that the characters interact with look good as well. My only major complaint was that while I was playing it, the game sort of jittered here and there, but that could have been because of the computer I was using to play it at the time. Other than that, it's a good looking game. Also, the soundtrack is phenomenal. It's mostly piano music, and the main song has a soft vocal delivery that is very pleasing to the ear. Let's go ahead and wrap this bad boy up and slap a rating on it. Overall, To the Moon is an amazing game that you'd have to experience to truly appreciate it. It tells a story that can bring anyone to tears, the graphics look great, the soundtrack is good, and it's just a good game. That's why I give this game an A. I highly recommend this game to anyone who enjoys a good story. I would describe it less as a game and more an experience that is definitely worth, well, experiencing. The storytelling is its strongest asset and the gameplay isn't bad either. It's not really a game that you can play multiple times to get a different experience out of it, but that's not the point. The point 
is to go on a journey that can definitely change the ones that are going on it. Well, that's it for this episode of Reviewing Stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you didn't cry too much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.